Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. So in this video we're going to be continuing our application and we're going to be working on the front end on this video and the next video we'll be working on the back end and then we'll do some styling. So the app that we're building is just a simple um, AI prompt generator, I guess. Well, it's not a prompt generator, but like the users will input like a question or whatever that they want to ask to ChatGPT and then we'll just get the output. Um, so we'll change the front end now and then once again next video will be the back end all right so right now we just have like some html tags or html elements here and we want to change it to to something more meaningful and something that looks a little bit better of course we're you now adding the styling now we'll add that at the end so let's just get the functionality working first so what we want to do first um we want to import react because we're going to be using let me see if it's let me just make it a little bit bigger all right so now we'll just we'll be importing react and then the next thing that we want to do is we're going to set some variables here because we're going to be using like uh we're going to be using the the use state for some of these values here so so we'll just say const uh, value set value and this is whatever the users are gonna set in the in the input box. And usually, we when we're using React, we just say uh, you know use a state, and it just gets gets imported here as well. And then we'll do something like that, right? But but in this case, since we're using a Next.js and we're using TypeScript, we have to give it like a like a type. What is this? Uh, what's the type of this, right? So the type in this case it's gonna be React that uses that's why we're importing React because it's gonna be React that uses state and this is just gonna be like a string so that whatever the users are inputting it it will be just like a string and yeah and then that's pretty much it so that's how we're gonna set it here because once again we're using TypeScript and then we're gonna do the same thing but this would be for like the output which is gonna be like uh, we'll just call it completion. You can call it output. We'll just call it completion this time. This time. So completion, set so completion, then we'll just do the same thing, right? Alright, so now we have these two values. And here for this we're gonna have to handle the input and all of that. But now let's just uh so enter a prompt. Um so we'll just say enter a prompt, right? Let's just keep it that way for now. Uh let me just change it maybe to just do like a div I guess and then yeah let's just add div and then here we just make this h2 something like that I guess all right yeah so that looks a little bit better you can see here and then we'll do the same thing for the output so let's just copy paste this here replace it and then here we'll just say output or result or completion or whatever you want to call it and now it's gonna look like this all right and now the input so this is what we want to change here so we have to give it a value right so the value it's gonna be equal to the value that we just created here so right now if I try to type it's no it's not letting me do anything and that's because we're not handling the input that's why so all right so now we need to implement the handle input here so we'll just say um, so that it doesn't give us a problem we'll just say handle input equal and then here we have to give it a type so we'll just say uh, react and this is a use callback function so just do it like that and then what we have to do is we have to give it an event, right? So before we will just give it the event, but now we have to also give this event a type. So it will be react that change change event, and this would be of type HTML HTML input element, which is the the element that we're using here. We'll just say that, and then use the usual arrow function here. And there we have to give it. Uh, what we want so we want to set the value to whatever the user is typing right so target that value and that should stay the way it is like that all right and let's see I'm missing this here yeah that's it 
all right and don't forget this the semicolon and that's your handle input here so now what we're doing here it's we're just adding the type and then we just set it the same way that as we used to do it in react all right so now we can say that on change so once the users type on it we can call the function handle input uh, what happened here handle input all right so now let's go uh, save it and let's just go back to our app and now we can type so now we can type stuff so now we just need to add like a button that you know that we submit that helps us submit what we're typing so let's go where it says input and then we'll just add like a button here and this button is gonna be uh, called we'll just say generate or something like that generate right so let's see how it looks so now we have it here generate it's not doing anything but now we can type we have the button and then the whatever we get from OpenAI we'll get it here so now let's also call our backend so we don't have a backend yet so we'll create one um, maybe we'll create it in the next tutorial let's just set it up right now so let me close this here but we'll all right so let, let's just set it up uh, let's set up the folders as well so inside of the pages I'm gonna create a folder called API and inside of that one I'll create like a file called hello.ts so this is the usual one that you use uh, to test the stuff right when you call the when you call the backend uh, using like a, a Next.js app all right so here we'll have our backend code so we'll just close it for now but now we have the structure since we're using Next.js you know that we have the client and the server on the same application which simplifies a lot of things all right so let's just go back to the front end and right now as I said we just have the handle input so we also need to handle the submit of the button right so we'll just say uh, handle submit or handle on click so once we click on it and then we'll add it to the button later but let's just do this so then we'll have it will be like an async function here we just follow the regular you know arrow function and then we say um, since we have our output here which is the completion one we'll say uh, set completion and we're gonna set that to loading so the user see that's loading right uh, loading like that alright and then we'll get the response and we have to await for the call so we're gonna make the call to the back end so await fetch and we're gonna make the call to the to our back end since our back end is in the same uh, folder as our front end so we'll just do uh, you know forward slash API and then the name of the file in my case it's hello.ts so we'll just put hello All right and then what we're passing so we're passing it's gonna be like a method that's gonna be a post so we'll just say post All right and then we're gonna be passing the following headers same thing here and so we're just gonna be passing the header subtype uh, content type and it would be like application adjacent okay and then we're also gonna be passing a body here which is gonna be a JSON that stringify and then we're passing the text which is it's gonna be set to value which is whatever the user is gonna input in the box right all right and let's see what else do we need here so then we'll just create another variable that's gonna have the data that we're getting from our response so we'll just await we'll just await for the response say response this is gonna be that JSON uh, don't do this here response.json 
and this is where we're gonna be getting our response and then we set value we just clear whatever the user typed after they submit right and then we set the completion which is also here set completion so we'll just set completion to let me maybe I should make this a little bit bigger set completion to whatever is in the variable result uh, data the result the choices that's how we get the it uh, we get it like that from open ai uh, zero the text all right and it's giving me some problems here uh this one changed to constant value don't know why it should be value and then this one should be completion so where's so it was set to loading first right so like that content type uh, body type okay so the problem here is that this should be the parentheses and not the curly braces okay and I'll just go over this uh, once again so let me save it all right so basically what we have here is we have a handle on click function it's an async function arrow function uh, we use a sync because we need to await for the call to the back end we set the completion to loading which is going to show well we generate we have this variable response which is uh you know we're just making the call to the back end to our own back end which is this file here and it's a method post because we're actually you know asking the server to give us something or we're submitting to the server rather it's not a get and then in headers uh, here with we just pass a content type application that uh, slash json and here we just have body json that is stringified the text and the value which is what we're passing and we're just setting this new variable here which is going to get us the response from openai and then we just uh, clear the value in the input box and then we set completion which we said before to loading we're going to set it to whatever is in this variable which is the result uh, that openai gave us all right so now we need to add it to the button so once it's click we're gonna call that so handle on click all right so now we should have our front end now we don't have a back end so it's not gonna work so if you make a call so we got this error which says that the string didn't match the expected pattern it's it's making a call to the back end but we don't have anything in the back end so we're gonna get a problem so but this is pretty much the front end of course we'll style it later so don't worry too much about styling it now but it's working uh, at least we know the front end is working or at least we have the setup for the front end to work so we need to to create like the back end file we need to connect it to OpenAI and then we'll see if it's working okay so that's pretty much for this video um, once again um, stick around on the next video we're gonna work on the back end we're gonna connect to open AI and then we'll get some something on the screen in our front end so if you like the video just don't forget to subscribe just leave a comment leave a like and I'll see you on the next one thank you